when it comes to the movement of the Earth, flat earthers always come up with the Michelson-Morley experiment. This experiment was meant to demonstrate the existence of the ether and failed to do so. Flurfers, however, consider the null result as proof of a stationary Earth. Witsit, on the other hand, thinks Einstein has explained away the null result by inventing the length contraction in order to rescue the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Listen to this. And then relativity came in, this is why Einstein's so famous, he proposed a solution to the problem, which is that the apparatus contracted just the right amounts where you couldn't make the measurement with the light and see the difference, and you can never actually measure the contraction because you're also on the Earth. Which it is wrong here. At so many levels, I wouldn't know where to begin. In the first place, it wasn't Einstein that explained away the null result. It was Fitzgerald and Lawrence who claimed that electric fields in motion were deformed, thus giving a length contraction that just compensated for the phase shift. So it couldn't be detected. Lawrence was a firm believer in the existence of the ether and desperately tried to explain why Michelson Morley couldn't show it to be true. It was Poincaré who showed that this explanation couldn't be right and introduced another explanation for the lack of evidence for the moving ether that in time didn't hold water either. Einstein was the one that gave a proper explanation of what was become known as length contraction of moving bodies. In short, pun intended, it comes down to this. In relativity physics, length contraction, also known as space contraction, is the shortening of an object along the direction of its motion relative to an observer. This last part, relative to an observer, is important, but I'll come back to that later. In one of the other debates he engaged in, Professor Phil Bell asked him to calculate the contraction so he would see that it was negligible. Of course, Witsit didn't do that. If he had done that, he would have calculated that the length contraction due to the Earth orbiting the Sun would be around 99.999999 Nine-nine-nine-nine-nine-five percent of the length when measured stationary relative to the observer. In this respect he made another huge blunder. He didn't know the formula for length contraction in the first place. In a debate with FTFE he showed that he just googled the formula and, and Google gives the wrong answer. Witsit sounds very convinced when he corrects FTFE and states You're wrong. You said it wrong. Um, no, I didn't. Uh oh. Which bit did I say wrong? Over C squared? V squared um, over C squared, yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, V squared over C squared. Pretty sure it's V squared times C squared. An indication that he doesn't understand what his wrong formula would imply. No matter how small the relative velocity is, due to the huge speed of light, this formula would lead to the problem of the square root of a negative number. But I suppose that Witsit doesn't understand imaginary numbers either. But the worst mistake he makes is that he doesn't understand the workings of reference frames. All calculations are moot because this is a hypothetical situation that only occurs in the mind of Witsit, who missed the point where it says that the observation should be made relative to the moving object, or better, from outside the reference frame of the moving object, that is, outside of the Earth. This is never the case for experiments performed on Earth itself, with an apparatus on the Earth. When this is pointed to him, Witsit tries to defend his position by citing Einstein. This author unjustifiably said there was a difference in Lorentz's view and mine regarding the physical facts, but there is not. That's what unjustifiably means. The question as to whether or not length contraction really exists or not is misleading. Uh -huh. It doesn't, it doesn't quote unquote really exist insofar as it doesn't exist for a co-moving observer, though it really exists. 
Yeah, though it really exists. What's the next bit? No, that's the end of the sentence. I looked this citation up, and lo and behold, it is incomplete, as FTFE also noted. He left out the last part where Einstein said that it can only be detected by a non-co-moving observer. His conclusion that Einstein meant that length contraction is a real physical thing can in no way be drawn from Einstein's citation. In his book Relativity, the Special and General Theory, Einstein wrote at the end of paragraph 16, Thus, for a coordinate system moving with the Earth, the mirror system of the Mugs and Morley is not shortened. Why did he say that? When FTFE cited this quote, Witsit reacted like this. And he disappeared. In short, Witsit was wrong, very wrong and he is spreading his pseudo-scientific nonsense without knowing what he is talking about, without proper citations, and ignoring citations that contradict what he is trying to say. He may speak at machine gun speed, but maybe that's what prevents him from understanding what he says. He just doesn't get it. <laughs>